Oh, welcome back to our inventory tutorial. This is Mahalik. I guess we'll pick back up from where we left off. Uh, so far we have it set up so when you press E uh, it'll do the line trace and store the actor hit. Um, next we'll create the pickup function so add function rename it pick up item and when this fires it's gonna have to do a cast which we'll get to in a moment but we can go ahead and add the variables so add one called inventory I'm sure I misspelled that horribly yep Inventory. Alright, and it will be a type, uh, whatever you named the item structure, which I just named item data structure. So it is going to be an array of those arrays of arrays, basically. It's going to be a list of all the different packs of data for each item you pick up and we need to make that exposed so we can see it later All right, we'll go ahead and get to the next large step it's, a, it's a basically I guess I'll cover parenting under blueprints in the game blueprint well let's put that in there yeah move here open the folder and create a blueprint actor and name it I like to name it a uh, master item because our BP underscore master item because it's easier to see um, that's a blueprint if it has BP underscore in front of it but basically what this is going to be is it's going to be the parent class of all the items you want to be able to pick up um, like uh, for it being the parent class it means everything you uh, right click and you do create based off this will have the data and same setup as what's in here so what we're going to do is set up that uh, item data structure in here so whenever we see an actor we can cast to its parent and if it fails then we know we can't pick it up but if it goes through we know everything that's under this is going to have this data which is what lets us create the uh, the array of different actors in the first place or different blueprints so open it up um, we need to go if you see right now there's not very many uh, variables on the defaults so we need to go to graph for the master item add a variable name it item data and it will be the item data structure compile it and now if you go back to defaults you can open this up and you see all the data we set up so we leave this blank um, and create all of our asset blueprints based off this and all of those will have this data which um, we know all items would have so we can pull this specific data from anything we make so save it and now uh, we'll create an asset uh, Go to blueprints. I, I'm going to create a consumable first. So create a new folder. I like to have a folder for each thing I do. And I'll explain that in just a moment. So open this up. Blueprint master item and create a blueprint based on this. It opens it up. But the first thing I like to do is rename it so I don't get the two mixed up. So 
whenever you do it, it's always going to have blueprint master um, item underscore child at the end. So rename it. The way I do my naming, which helps keep organized when you have hundreds upon hundreds of different items to pick up, is I always do, I start with blueprint to help you find it easier. And whatever the item is going to do, like if it's a tool, I'll type tool. If it's a consumable, I'll do consumable. Um, in our project, Antiquius, um, I have building mechanics, so all of those I put build. Uh, plant whatever you whatever you want to do to organize it since this will be consumable I'll just type usable underscore and we'll make an apple so then open it back up uh, go on components you'll add your mesh which I don't have anything right now so I'll use a content um, starter example uh, sphere that looks good lock this and scale it down to half size because nobody wants an apple that big uh, name this apple I don't have the thumbnail yet uh, what I like to do is take a sc screen capture of it and edit it out so it's just the apple and put it in there for a placeholder it is a consumable uh, you don't mess with the ID. I'll explain that in a bit. The weight, we'll just make it 5 units. And for the text data, we'll just say uh, Juicy Red Apple. Compile it. Save it. And well, this it's still a really big apple. I'm gonna scale it down a bit more. Yeah, that's about right. And you can, if you wanted to have physics, uh, go back to the component tab, scroll down, and simulate physics. So when the game starts, well, we'll just you can kick it around and stuff, and blow up the physics engine so it flies through the wall alright so next we need to go back to my character and set up the pickup right now if you look at it you can press E it'll line trace and it'll save that data but there's nothing to actually do with it yet we want to pick it up so go to blueprints my character so pick up item First thing we need to do is cast master item and pop in item targeted. Uh, what you can do when you drag this, if you put it directly on a node, it'll pop it on for you. Um, so what this does is it'll, whatever the actor targeted is, it's going to try to cast to it. Um, the cast node is basically saying treat as. So treat this. Um, actor targeted as a master item which since it, if it, it's an apple it's going to have the parent so it will be able to if it's something like a wall that has nothing to do with master item so it'll fail so this is kind of like a branch node if this works it will if not it'll fail so uh, we need to go back real quick to master item graph and this needs to be exposed otherwise we won't be able to see it or edit it so fix that real quick go back so now when we drag this off type in item and now we can get item data without that exposed it wouldn't have showed up so this is the item data for whatever we hit and we can break this open and now we have access to all these different variables and my antiquous project uh, this is like 20 long. Um, so what we do is get our inventory and we can add and whenever we fire this it's going to add this. 
if you just want a simple inventory structure setup you can ignore ignore this part and just drag that in but if you want something more advanced to have uh, like tools that each have their own specs like uh, durability it's gonna be you need to have unique the unique item IDs so you can make this open it up and for most of this you just pretty much connect a little rainbow wire everything up the only thing to watch out for which I've run into is you have this set up and down the line you add more variables you'll have to remember to come back to wire this up otherwise it won't have it but uh, for the item ID we need to add a variable real quick of float it's not an array and I say current item ID need to get it add and I like to do 0.01 so you can just have millions of things to pick up throughout your game need to set it So basically, what what's going to happen with this is every time you pick up an item, pop that there. Every time you pick up an item, it's going to get the current ID that w that it had add point one, set it, and then when it adds this, it's going to use that new ID. So even if you pick up and drop the same thing over and over, it's going to constantly have a new ID. So nothing you pick up will be the exact same so uh, that's about it for the um, picking up something I like to do oh no it's not we need to get well you could drag this actor targeted node all the way over but I just popped down a new one for make it cleaner get it and you need to destroy actor And a way to test will be just a simple look, print line or print string. And we'll print the name and well a pinned. Make a nice little fancy message. You picked up a space. We'll get the name and we'll pop it in. So we'll test it and see if this works. Compile, save, play. Oop. I need to fix. I'll fi have that fixed by next time. Alright, well, I'm going to check this bug and get back. Uh, I should just pick it up, destroy it, and pop up there. But I'll check this real quick, and we'll have it fixed by the next video.